this man with his own talk show on the mic with Mike is the best business radio program in the game. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On the Mic with Mike. It is the premier business radio program around. This is part of the Mike Kingdoms Radio Network. So we, we have new friends who join the family, mm-hmm. and the family is expanding. You know, we reach out for the best and brightest, and that's what we get. Sometimes we got to keep pounding on them until they, we were trained by Jehovah Witness, but people didn't realize. We just keep going. Hey, this is a great thing. This is a great thing. Trust me, it, it is. We're using the power of the microphone for good we work. We followed up six times a day to make sure I came here. Yes. You know what? You got the yeah. job done. Wrapping on the door. That is. To the point <laughs> where they were like, do we need to call the authorities because this guy's speaking it's in the either sign the contract or yes. call the authorities. That's right. So. Sign it or either we will be keep showing So we're here. Here. You are yeah. here. All righty. I always say it's a business radio show you guys are launching. Uh, tell everyone who you guys are. Ryan Redman. We know who you are. I mean, we, we know you've been on with us at Detroit. You've been here before, but you brought your partner. Yes. All righty. So let us know who you guys are and what you do. Rob, I'll let you go first. Yeah. So They've heard from me uh, probably too much at this point. Not too probably much. True. Yeah. yeah. Not too true. I, so I'm, uh, my name is Rob Rayborn. I'm a licensed psychotherapist here in Richmond. I work with a private group practice that's been expanding over the last five years, resilience counseling. And I, really enjoy getting to getting to work with people in Richmond who come in for uh, some some level of assistance uh, with their with their life or their lifestyles issues men's issues families issues and I, I just cannot be happier to to get to serve the Richmond community in that capacity one of the great parts about having your own radio show is when you get somebody who does something like that I take the ball and run with it mm-hmm. so how are people doing I always ask how are people doing now we've come out of the pandemic Everybody's like, okay, let's get back to how we were. Mm-hmm. How are people doing? Yeah, so, I mean, so many individuals were absolutely obliterated and rocked emotionally and mentally throughout the last two, two and a half years. And it does seem like since the spring has started here that we're turning a corner and individuals are now refocusing and recalibrating their efforts towards being able to work on themselves again and uh you know original grows uh goals for growth and being prosperous that they had before you know they had to to shut themselves and the world down it's a new look because before when i got put on timeout i took myself off of the treadmill and said okay i'm gonna step off and take care of myself we kind of looked at that as kind of like weakness mm-hmm. because you aren't tough enough man up get out there stay on it the whole world got sent home and, yeah. the whole, the whole, and all of a sudden we had to sit there and figure it out whenever I have a therapist or, or folks on who are in the mental health field or that area I always talk about sometimes it's men and yes men how you doing and we're, the, the knee jerk is I'm yeah. fine oh, yeah. the wheels are coming off and I'm saying I'm good mm-hmm. yeah what's yeah. what's remedy please offer some help <laughs> <laughs> how much time do you have <laughs> exactly yeah. Are we doing, I, we're doing better. Are we being more forthright as men to ask for help? Yeah, I think guys are doing great over these last few years. I'm so impressed with, with vulnerability and men breaking down the stigma that they, that they can't, they can't get help. They can't open up and say, you know what, I'm, maybe I'm not fine. Maybe I've, maybe I've got things going on too that I want to, that I work on. Uh, you know, I don't want to be like previous generations where we just take yep. everything to our grave. Yes. And, yeah. But that's part of my generation. Yes. Yeah. 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 So there, you know, a new, a new tide's turning and it, it, I'm wholly encouraged by it. So it almost, um, almost seems cool to kind of like, like check in on your mental health and get help there. It almost mm-hmm. seems like it's turning a trend where it's becoming more popular and cool almost as a guy. Because yeah, you know, when we look at it, whether it's in business, whether it's in sports, you dust yep. yourself off and you keep going to the next one. And all those things just keep building up and building up and building up. But now we're seeing, even we're even encouraging kids and younger people to say, I need help, which is before it, it was really, a, you need to really, you know, pull yourself up out of bootstraps, toughen up and keep going. And we're realizing when we got sent home for two years, that uh, maybe it's a different way that, that we need to do business mm-hmm. as a society. Well, this, sorry, I'm gonna get off the soapbox, but- uh, no, Yeah, right. well, I think we had to even get more, I worked from home, from home for three years and we had to get very creative. There's no separation at that point. No, You're working upstairs, the kids are downstairs. And there's no separation from, I go leave to work, um, work at home are almost combined. They're not, they're done, they're no different. There used to be a point when dad left, mom left, it was see you later. 
And all of a sudden, mom, dad go upstairs, go downstairs, go around the corner. Kids, kids aren't looking at it, I don't care. No, like, kids hey. are popping in the meetings. And the me- and there was a time when that would have been problematic. It's not anymore. It, because people look at work-life balance thing. You know, it's like we don't have to live for, for the work aspect of, of everything. So, uh, Ryan, we know one of the things you're going to call this, to, is it the catalyst? Yeah, Rob and I are calling this the catalyst uh, tagline to be determined. And, to be, uh, yes. Yeah. One of the great parts about this is that, we, and we talked about this before, was everyone wants to leave. I'm leaving corporate America. I'm done. Yeah. But now you don't know how to do it because, you know, yeah. You want to jump in, but maybe the heart wants to jump in, but the head every so often says, I don't know about this. Am I ready? Mm-hmm. So, uh, Rob, is that the part that you're going to you're gonna bring to this when I'm sitting, you know, corporate America in the cubicle, ready to make that transition, I'm all good, and then those doubts pop up. Right. And, I mean, the hope is that we're going to be meeting with so many of these individuals who over the last a uh, couple couple years, the last decade, had figured that out for themselves, and we want to dig into what was that psychological like milieu within them that allowed them to make that leap into it. You know, and this is something that so many people today, if they just had those those specific answers of what what it takes in today's business world, then then they'll be able to do it too. So it's not no, like no. it was. And you're not alone in it either. Um, all these people we're interviewing have have made that jump and kind of. Like you talked about, Rob, like yeah. what's your story? Uh, how did you make that jump? Um, why'd you continue? No, yeah, no, I mean, we want to be able to just dig right into what are the what are the modern day answers to being able to say, you know what, I can leave corporate traditional working worlds behind to do things for myself. I've always wanted to, but I don't know how. You know, many decades ago, it wasn't as complicated as it is today if you want to get something going. And uh, there's just so much have, too, even with like mm-hmm. social media, like it's like overwhelming. You see how so many people with all these success stories, they only show you the, the end result. No, like I just made, I just closed this deal. I got this done. I made this much money. And there's a lot of story, like how they got there. And we want to kind of explore that. So people understand how to do it. Well, you guys are in the right place because if there was ever a definitive answer, it is a business show on ESPN. Right. It's not exactly a business show. It's about life journey. It's about people telling yeah. their story. Exactly. And everyone has a story. Just like, okay, I was in, and everyone says corporate America. There used to be a time I was a salesman. You know, salesmen were out on the street, yeah. you know, just mm-hmm. conducting commerce. Everyone wasn't. Then all of a sudden the pandemic hit, the streets are just flooded with everybody out there. Now with the cell phone and the laptop conducting commerce and there's no room for salesmen anymore. Because now all of a sudden, look, we don't have to be chained to the desk. I can go chase that dream. When you want to chase dreams in the past, parents always gave you that look like, okay, Mm -hmm. nobody's ever done it. But a lot of things happen now that we had no idea. We didn't know what a Zoom was before. And if your webinar crashed in the middle of a business meeting, it was horrific. Oh, yeah. Now, hey, Bill froze up. He'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> we just go on. It's not yeah. even a thing anymore. Yeah, I think our ultimate goal is to kind of tell what's the story of the business owner? How, what was the catalyst that made the jump for them? And then what are common obstacles they face in the beginning and how they overcome it? And, and in doing so, promoting their business and also educating people in this situation, whether it's corporate America, small bit, whatever they're coming from, even just on their own, how to open up a small business. If that's One of the things, the catalyst, that, that's a great name. You know, it is. And Ryan, you're, you're like me. I've seen the you guy before. And, you know, it's talking about, I did this. I went over, I used to be in corporate America. Adding this part to it, the psychological, that makes a difference because sure. you sit there, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And there's that Friday and you're giving them a notice, I'm done, where there's a bunch of butterflies. And then yeah. Monday happens and all of a sudden, you're free to go do whatever you want to do. And now all of a sudden, you have to make it happen. So you guys are talking to people who are in corporate America thinking about making a jump. Because we've all talked about making a jump. What do you have to do? The nuts and bolts of it. Mm-hmm. You're talking about, hey, it's that inner thing. Mm-hmm. How, do we, how do we address that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we've got so many guys and, and, and gals here in Richmond who I just know they're like ready to make that leap yep. into, into pursuing a passion of theirs. And, but there's just a couple pieces along the way that if they could just hear individuals that they relate to or they can hear themselves and their stories, uh, that we're going we're gonna to be so excited to, to eventually get to hear other success stories and then they come, 
come from people learning what they can learn on the catalyst. A lot of people struggle with, I think in general, is taking action towards their passion, take the next mm -hmm. step, taking action every day towards making progress towards that, that journey or what it is you want to do. And I think, and a lot of that is the psychology around it. Um, so it's exploring that. And then, of course, promoting the business owner. It's uh, and this is coming. You know, I didn't want to be the old man. Hey, kid, get off my lawn. I think you're there, Mike. I, no, I am. I am there. Clearly, clearly, <laughs> clearly, I am there because you know what? I remember when people didn't chase passion, they went and got paychecks. Yeah. And we stayed there, and we stayed there, and we stayed there. And twenty years, thirty years later, they said thank you, and you left. You had you had faith in the in the organization you worked for. Right. Well, that's gone. You know, some people are saying, chase your passion, that you can make a living out of what you like or love to do. That's a radical thought coming from the old generation. We just went and did it. You had the radical folks out there. They were kind of like salespeople or, sure, sure. you know, the ones who kind of were on, in the line. They came, yep. but they got that paycheck on Friday. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys are out there saying, you can go do what you love and you can make a living doing it. And you don't have to be doing it 24 seven a lot of times. It doesn't have to be who you are. Yeah, I don't think anyone really covers the, like, how to do that. No. And that's what we want to educate people on is how to make the jump properly, how to successfully do it. And I mean, no better way to do that than through the story of people who have already successfully done it. That's right. That's the Catalyst Tuesday, 6 a.m. ESPN Richmond. That's where you are. You guys are also, now, you know, this is shameless plug. You guys are also sponsored to Women Speaking Sports. That is, and since we're on ESPN, you know, we got to throw that. Well. Yeah. Might do that. So that is Dr. Danny, Steph B. She's the Brooklyn Betty with the business breakdown. We also have uh, uh, Danielle Fitzhugh, Chesterfield Chamber, uh, the CEO, El Presidente. We have Carrie Roth, who is here with us as well. And then we have Star Mallory. They are, and Lisa Trani, our PR expert, branding expert. They are the women who make up uh, parts of women speaking sports. We shoot that every Wednesday down at the uh, Hilton downtown, as well as from 5 to 7 p.m. Okay. And then it shows up on ESPN Return 106 on 6 a.m. on Friday. So we'd just like to thank you guys. Welcome. Uh, welcome to being sponsors of the program. And also having... The catalyst come to you just get some fancy snappy. You guys look like some some snappy music kind of guys. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. There's been there's been text conversations back and forth on on music. We'll figure it out. You yeah. guys got walk up music, music, entrance music. Yeah, like wrestlers. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. a fog machine here. Oh, that's how you roll. <laughs> okay, I got, hey. I got one. Wait, wait a second. Okay. I got something. Hold on a second. <laughs> I got something here. We got uh, confetti cannon. No, no. That's enough. Uh, it's not really foggy, right? uh, that's uh, not fun. It's on a budget page. My well, wife plays that. <laughs> okay, I ain't yeah, touching that's, that. That's what Target sounds like. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> when I ride by, it starts doing that. Uh -huh. All right, okay, we got to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. As I always say, the microphone ain't free. Plus, my grandkids do need stuff, and I do hear this symbol. Yeah, that's what that's what they see me as. All right, we got to break a break. We'll be back shortly. In Rico is cultivating a community. <clears throat> RBA, the tan. Make sure you check out my main man, Mike King Biz. Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 a.m. on Sports World 6. Is it better than your grandkids? Okay. On the mic with Mike in the Tampin of Business Talk Radio. You're starting to irritate me. Hi, I'm Reba Hollingsworth with CBS 6, and I was on the mic with Mike and had a fabulous time. Make sure you tune in every week. Mike, Mike, Reba, Mike, Mike, stop the mic with Mike, stop the mic with Mike. My name is Isabella, and you're listening to Mike Team Biz. How are you? That's my scam. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We'd like to thank the champ for that ringing endorsement. His name is Mike, like my name is Mike, but we ain't calling no last names because I don't need to get my attorney, uh, you know, Mr. Lauder involved because I don't have any attorney money. So uh, we were just saying it was it was the champ. Thank you, champ, for that endorsement. We are the champion of Business Talk Radio here, here with the gentlemen of Catalyst. You're going to hear them Tuesday, 6 a.m. That's You're going to hear them every Tuesday, 6 a.m., talking about business and also the the area of business sometimes we don't talk about, which is the, the side of making a jump. How do we do it? And when we get on the other side, that water is deep and we're out there trading water by ourselves. But Ryan, as we know with the chamber, you don't always have to be by yourself. 
No, the chamber, I mean, a lot, a lot of connection groups in gen general, but the chamber is, uh, especially Chesterfield, is very, very, very helpful. Uh, they have a good team there that will connect you to other businesses, other business partners, similar like businesses to help you kind of grow your business. So it's anyone doing business in Chesterfield, that's a good, good support group. Because we know the idea of going out on your own in business is one thing. But when you're out there, you may need to go to a therapist or something when you're out there trying to figure out every aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You're trading in a deep water mm -hmm. and they need help. Sir, here's that help. It's a time of self-discovery, building your insight and introspection and, and, and building some inner strength because you're gonna be you're gonna be tested in those waters. And too many people swim back to shore before and when they didn't have to. They just needed support and they needed to find it within themselves. You know, I like that. They swim back to shore. Those are the lucky ones. Mm -hmm. Those, those, those are, are the lucky ones and they're out there making a difference. When you look at business people out there, what's the number one thing that, that you see are different sort of entrepreneur types you'll see and then the regular folks who are just, you know, they're good with the, what they're doing. You're seeing them on a personal basis. Is there a difference? When I see the when I see successful people, it's the successful entrepreneurs I I pick up on individuals who figured out how to not be afraid of their failures. And people who face failures plenty of times, knowing that that was all part of the gig. People who are who might feel stuck in the corporate world might have this this worldview that failure and the emotional pain of failure is is too much and is is an unnecessary aspect of of their being. And so why why push or make a leap? Well, that is true because, like, I've had other people who are going to ask them when it's time to shut a business down or when it's time. We're so connected with that when we say we're going to switch, maybe we stop doing a line or maybe we stop doing something else. That became who we were. And that became who we are. Awesome. Because so much is tied up in that gray area between business and personal and social. And all of a sudden, the business thing is gone. And what happened to me? Hmm. Yeah, you would say, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, I was well said. That's a tough one. So, what do you tell people? Gosh, you know, it's, it's like the, it's this question of like, how do you how do you stay hopeful? And and then I find myself being like, well, how do I stay hopeful in all of this? Yeah. And eventually, the answer comes when with well, this this person has to learn how to tell their story and understand their own story, which they probably have not explored for it, but in a way that allows them to feel so empowered and so self-sufficient self-understanding that they can actually begin to make uh, to make moves towards what, what they are passionive about what they want to do were you always right. a caregiver guy yes <laughs> yeah. okay yeah. And because you yeah. don't become that over you didn't wake up one day and become that guy because i always say who takes care of the caregivers mm -hmm. so like all the therapists they have somebody they talk to because i always ask people hear a lot of bad stuff and like how does that bad stuff not stick to you when I get up and leave, I just dump all that on you and be like, thanks, Mike. God bless you. You walk out, you go, ooh, Lordy. You gotta yeah. you gotta do something with that. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of self-care that takes place. There's a lot of making sure that I'm surrounded with people that I can be uh, vulnerable and connected to that, you know, keep keep me lifted up. But and I think and I think that's similar with when you open kind of like what you're talking about the small bit when you open a business, yeah. like you want a support group. You want to be able to be vulnerable and close to those people and you want a support group one who could tell you what what actions you should be taking to kind of to kind of you can be vulnerable to and kind of help support you throughout that time but you got to have kind of to your point with the story you have to see big picture like there's a reason you made the jump what's big picture where will this get you in four to five years and what do you need to do over the next few years or a few months even a few weeks to accomplish that but it's very tough as a business owner there's so many highs and there's a ton of lows and what's the long-term vision of this and how do we accomplish that? All right, this is Catalyst. The gentlemen are here with us. And how can people find you guys out there right now? 6 a.m. on Tuesdays for sure. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Ryan Redmond with Eagle One. Uh, Eagle One, we help you find your prospects when you can't. And Rob? Yeah, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be building the LinkedIn profile and we're going to be... Uh, establishing a, a social yep. social media presence and a website presence shortly. Yep. Okay, Rob, uh, give our listeners an idea of something that they can take and work on this week. So when we hear them next week, you'll be like, okay, that's something, that's a, that's a takeaway from the conversation that we're having this morning. Okay. How about, how about this week for our listeners? Why don't you take five minutes, 
pen and paper in hand and put that pen in your non-dominant hand and I want you to write out a list of five things that you think you need to hear in this in this moment. And you've got to come up with those things and make sure this is affirming and supportive, but I want you to use your non-dominant hand, start get you a little in touch with the, your inner child a bit here, see what we'll come up with. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I bring experts in. <laughs> Clearly, I never would have thought about that. Okay, I've heard it's about your dictionary. Huh? I know, writing down, you know, your, your things that you want, but you're talking about putting in a non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to access, you know, parts of yourself that you, you might have not uh not been in touch with for quite some time now here you go because a lot of times we're putting out fires we're going on to the next moment so you guys are here this is the catalyst esp enrichment 106.16 a.m you're going to hear us and they're going to be talking about business the culture of business the vulnerability of it as well as getting out into the deep water and sometimes you should come back to shore and sometimes you can keep going and you know you're doing good but sometimes in the army, we used to say a good run to bad stand any day of the week. We'll live to fight another day. Oh, you know, we, the numbers aren't in our favor right now, so we'll come back tomorrow. That's but cool. sometimes you have to keep going, mm -hmm. running in deep water. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you're going to get with these guys right here every week. You're going to hear less of me and more of them. This is the catalyst. So on the mic with Mike, Rob, Ryan, they're here with us. ESPN Rich 106.1. It's the catalyst. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, y'all. Take care. Thanks, y'all.